hey, um, reindeer, you know me, I'm reindeer. Um, so I, I'm not puppy anymore. I just wanted to let you guys know that you can call me reindeer because I am a special reindeer. As you can see, I have the reindeer antlers and I have reindeer ears. So I, I'm not puppy anymore. So please don't call me puppy, okay? At least not for the rest of December. Maybe in January, I might become puppy again. But Merry Christmas, everybody, and welcome to our chapel. I'm so excited to be here. And let me get all the other friends because they all want to take a morning to you guys. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Yes, Reindeer was very excited to be on the video with you guys today. So thank you, Reindeer, for being here. Um, and who else wants to come and say good morning? Good morning, it's me, Lego Man, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun in the snow. I hope that you made some Lego snowmen, because um, Lego Man needs to be a snowman too, so I hope that you guys did that. And I hope that you played with Legos, and guess what? It's Friday, and we're, it's going to be on Christmas break, and you guys are going to get Legos for your Christmas presents, right? All Legos, I hope so. Anyways, okay, good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Who else wants to say good morning? Good morning. It's me, Mr. Fuzzy Wubs. I'm finally out of quarantine. So they let me come. Woohoo. And um, anyways, uh, I'm really excited to be here. And I'm really excited to eat a lot of gingerbread cookies because they're my favorite cookie. So if you guys want to make me any gingerbread cookies, definitely make them for me, okay? Because I love them. <laughs> you love gingerbread cookies. Snail, come and say good morning. Come and say good morning to everybody. Good morning, it's me, Snail. Oh my gosh, look at my mask. I look crazy. Um, it's like so high. <laughs> oh, there I am. Um, anyways, I love you guys. I really miss you guys. Um, and I love you guys so much. And I really, really miss you. And I hope I can see you guys soon. Oh, I'm sure you're gonna see them soon. Bugsy, come and say good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, and as you can see, I've turned extra blue because it's been so cold out and I spent all day playing in the snow yesterday. So I was getting extra blue and I hope you guys had fun. So anyways, uh, welcome to chapel. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Merry Christmas, everybody. So we actually um, have a special chapel. Um, we're gonna be reading a special story, um, a Christmas story and um, we're also going to be singing a special Christmas song. So let's get to our worship. And let's do that before we start our chapel. We, we will sing our song. So we'll be back with you guys in a few minutes. Okay, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's pray. Reindeer, would you pray for us? Of course, I will pray for you. Okay, everybody, close your eyes. Uh, dear God, we I pray for this day that we would be able to just hear your word and that it would just go into our hearts as we celebrate the coming of our King Jesus. Oh, how we love him so much. Um, that you are just, you're just such an amazing God and we love you. We thank you for the gift that you gave us, the gift of Jesus, the greatest gift that we could ever, ever, ever get in our entire lives. And, um, and, and thank you for making me a reindeer. Um, and I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, reindeer. Um, so today we are going to be sharing a special story. Um, and we're going to be talking about um, just how much God loves us, right? So God loves us so very, very much. And Christmas is coming, as we know. And we know that our special gift really is Jesus, right? Our special gift is Jesus. Um, and like we talked about last week, God also gives us other gifts, right? And all of those special talents and abilities and all of those gifts really are just supposed to show how much God loves us, right? That's why he blesses us so that we can use those gifts to bless other people and share his love with other people because God is love. And so it all just comes down to love. Everything that we ever do or say should always be done in love because that's just what it's all about, right? And this whole season is really receiving the gift of love. And that's the gift of Jesus. Um, so we have a special story that we're going to read. Um, and so I'm going to read the story to you guys. And then we'll come back and we will share about it. Okay, so hang on one sec. Okay, so the story is called Itsy Bitsy Christmas by Max Lucado. Let me get to the next page. Bitsy, watch out! Itsy grabbed his little sister's tail and pulled her back just in time. The big wagon rolled past and splashed them with mud. Be careful, Bitsy. You don't want to get run over. Bitsy jumped back and gulped. Her big eyes grew, grew even wider. I've never seen Bethlehem so busy, she exclaimed. People everywhere, wagons rolling, cows mooing, donkeys pulling, and camels. Do you know that camels spit? Bitsy stepped away from the camel nearest her. What's going on, Itsy? Follow me and I'll show you, the older mouse replied. <sniffs> Itsy took his sister's hand and they scampered to the top of the city wall. It's time to count all the people. Everyone has to go to their hometown and sign the big book. Bitsy looked around. This is a big day for Bethlehem. Big day indeed, said a deep voice behind them. Itsy and Bitsy turned. A donkey was talking to them. The mice were on the wall, so they could see him face to face. Whoa, you're big, said Itsy. I've never seen inside the nose of a donkey, he added, peering inside the nostril. Eee, Bitsy offered. Who are you, she asked the donkey. I'm Daniel from a faraway town. Are you here to be counted? No, he said very slowly. I am here because of the king. What? Haven't you heard? The king is coming to Bethlehem. But Bethlehem, it is an itsy bitsy town, Bitsy explained. Why, why would a king come here? This king is special. He comes for everyone, big and small. Like us? Yeah, like you. Bitsy turned her whiskers bouncing. Itsy! We need to tell our friends. Yes, 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 Itsy agreed. They will want to see the king too. <laughs> the mice dashed between feet, hooves, rolling wagons, and wheels and ran towards their stable. They scurried under the gate, up the stable post, and onto their favorite ra rafter. From their spot high above the floor, they could see all of their friends. Ruthie, the mama horse, was the biggest. Rowdy, the rooster, was perched on the rail. Six sheep were crowded in the corner. Charlie, the cow, grazed on some hay. 
Grumpy the goat sulked in another corner. He never smiled. He was always mad at someone. Itsy cupped his hands over his mouth and squeaked. Okay, everyone, gather in. We need to talk. No one moved. Bitsy tried. We have big news. No response. Bitsy turned to Rowdy the rooster. Can you help us? Sure, replied Rowdy. I love any excuse to make some noise. And he leaned his head back. The animals lifted their heads. Hey, groaned Grumpy the goat. Knock it off. I'm trying to nap. Itsy and I have big news. You're moving, Grumpy muttered. Grumpy, be nice, said Ruthie the mama horse. Itsy and Bitsy are going to tell us some big news. A king is coming to Bethlehem, to us. No one spoke for a long time. Then Rowdy crowded, a king coming to Bethlehem? That'll never happen. And the others snorted and bawed and neighed and mooed in agreement. They couldn't believe that a king would be coming to Bethlehem. <laughs> Kings come to imported places, said the sheep. And to imported people, agreed Grumpy. Not to places like Bethlehem or to mice like you. Itsy and Bitsy, said Ruthie, the mama horse. I'm afraid this place is not, it's just too common for a king. No king would care about us. Itsy looked at Bitsy. Well, Bitsy and I are going to find the king. Good luck with that, chuckled Grumpy. To see the king, to see the king. Bitsy zipped down the post and out the street. But then she stopped. Itsy, where will we find him? Itsy paused for a moment, placing his finger on his chin. Hmm, well, let's go where the important people go. Maybe let's go to the city gate. Off they went. The leaders of the town sat at the city gate, making decisions. Bitsy spotted a wise owl sitting on top of the gate. Mr. Owl, she shouted, we hear that a king is coming to Bethlehem. Have you seen him? A king in tiny Bethlehem? You won't find a king. So the king hadn't come to the wise ones at the city gate. I know, Itsy offered. Let's go where the camels live. Kings ride on camels, right? So the two mice scampered over to the camel corral. Mr. Camel, shouted Itsy. We are looking for a king. Have you seen him? Silly mouse. I've carried some very rich and imported men in my day, but I assure you they didn't come here. Kings don't come to common places like Bethlehem. But we talked to a donkey and uh, uh. Never trust a donkey, said the camel. Itsy sighed. Where else can we look? Well, let's look anyway, said Bitsy. The mice ran to the main street where the busy people rushed. Lots of busy people, but no king. They ran to the hotel where the sleepy people spent time resting. Lots of sleepy people, but still no king. They ran to the city market where all the business people worked all day. Lots of working people, but no king. Hmm. Finally, Itsy and Bitsy began to get tired. It was getting dark. Let's go home, Bitsy. Itsy sighed, everyone is right. No king is coming for us. We aren't important enough. Bitsy started to object, but didn't. A tear formed on her cheek as they headed toward home. I always wanted to see a king. Now I guess I never will. But when the mice neared the stable, they saw Daniel the donkey, the same one who had told them about the king. Itsy and Bitsy ran up onto the stable fence. We have looked all over the town for the king. We couldn't find him. Well, said the donkey in a low, slow voice, you just did. Daniel motioned <clears throat> with his head to the center of a stable where all of the animals stood in a circle. The two mice scampered up a fence post and looked. 
A little baby was asleep in a manger. Who is he? asked Itzy. He is the king, replied Ruthie. Just like you said, a king came to Bethlehem. His name is Jesus, explained Daniel the donkey. God sent him to love us, to help us, and to save us. He came for me, even though I laughed at you, said Rowdy the rooster. And he even came for us, even when we doubted you, said the sheep. And he even came for the grumpy, grumpy, grumpy goat. Daniel smiled and nodded his big head. God sent Jesus for all of us. Who would have thought, observed Itzy, a king for everyone. A tiny tear of joy rolled all the way down Bitsy's nose. He came, Bitsy said with a smile, even for a little one like me. We hope you enjoyed that story. It really just helps us to see that Jesus, he came for every one of us. No matter if we feel like we deserve him or not, maybe sometimes we feel like, gosh, why would Jesus love me? I feel like everything I do is ever, I always just make bad choices and I always get in trouble. Why would Jesus come for me? Or maybe you never even just stop to think about Jesus coming? He's the king, but he is, and he comes for everybody because he loves all of us. And all of you guys are very important to Jesus because he is love. And he came to earth to show how much he loves all of you. And he loves you all so very, very much. And your life matters and your life is important. And knowing him is so important. And so this Christmas, we hope and pray that you will truly receive the gift of Jesus, the gift of knowing him in your heart forever and becoming part of God's family and knowing that Jesus died for you, for everything, for your whole life, any sin, any bad choice, Jesus died for that because he wants you to just know him and spend every single day with him. And so we just pray that this Christmas, you would receive that gift of Jesus in your heart. And then for the new year and every year after that, you would just let Jesus come out of you, right? All of the gifts that he will give you, you will use them to change the world and bless the world. And so we're going to pray right now a special prayer. If you would like to receive Jesus in your heart, and we're going to pray, and you can pray it with us. Um, Reindeer, would you like to lead us in the prayer? Of course I would. That's one of the most special prayers. I remember when I prayed that, and it really changed my life forever. And, and I know that God loves me, and he, I know that he loves all of you. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you came here. You came to earth. You were born just for us, for all of us. And we thank you that you then went to the cross. You died on the cross for all of our sins, for all of our bad choices, so that we could then know you. We could know you forever and you could come and live in our hearts. And we pray that you would come this Christmas and you would come into the hearts of all of the students here at PCA and you would make yourself so real to them that they would know they could feel your love just surrounding them and going into their hearts. And then it would really change them and it would bring them peace and it would bring them happiness and joy to just want to just live, letting you live out of them, that you would, they would know it was you living in them and coming out of them and that your love would then flow to all of the other kids that you put in their life, in their class, to their families. And I just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, reindeer, that was such a beautiful prayer. Thank you so much. And yes, reindeer is so right. If you want to receive Jesus in your heart and you just prayed that prayer, then you just start thanking him and praising him and saying, thank you, Jesus, that you live in my heart, that you love me, that you gave me, you gave me the gift of you. 
to live in me, to help me for the rest of my life so I never have to be alone. I never have to wonder what I'm going to do or anything. You'll always be there to lead me and guide me and help me and just be my everything. And so that's just amazing. So we just pray and we hope that you guys have a very, very Merry Christmas and that you really feel God's love just surrounding you throughout the entire season. Um, and let me let all the friends come because they really want to say Merry Christmas to all of you guys. And maybe some of them might want to sing a little song. Um, go ahead, Reindeer. Do you want to start? Of course I do. And I sing to you guys, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. And I am Reindeer, so don't call me Puppy anymore. Oh, thank you, Reindeer. Mr. Fuzzy Wugs. Um, a very Merry Christmas, and um, don't forget about the gingerbread cookies, okay? I'll be waiting for them. Um, seriously, um, very Merry Lego Christmas to everybody, and we hope to see you um, and your new Legos in the new year. Well, I'm sure we're going to see them, but I don't know if they're going to all have new Legos. Well, I sure hope that they all will, okay? So, uh, don't forget, you say Merry Lego Christmas to everybody. <laughs> Merry Lego Christmas. Seriously? Snail, would you like to come on? Um, yes. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. And I pray that you all will be surrounded by love. And I love all of you guys. And, um, and thanks for being my friend. And, um, I miss you guys. So I'll see you guys soon, okay? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Blue, would you like to come? Yes. Um, thank you for letting us share every week with you guys. We've really enjoyed it. And I've been learning so much about Jesus. And I wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll see you in 2021. Yes, we will. We will see everybody in 2021. Bye. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. Don't forget. I'm Reindeer. <laughs>